everyone, and welcome to Barog's Game Room, where today, I talk about a somewhat touchy subject. As a gamer who bought Splatoon on launch day, I've been a huge fan. The designs, the gameplay, the single player mode, it all just came together to be the best experience I've had on a Nintendo home console since I first played Smash Brothers. But that said, while the game itself is so much fun, a lot of people were upset at Nintendo for how they were releasing content in the game. In order to keep the game fresh, get it, cause you gotta be fresh in the game, Fresh. That's how you do it, right? Nintendo decided to hold back content and release multiplayer maps and weapons in increments throughout the summer. So in today's Thoughts On episode, I'm going to give my two cents on this process as a whole, and if I think it's a good practice to continue this in the future. And if you want the short answer, yes and no. So when Splatoon launched, I'm going to be honest here, I thought I got a little ripped off. You see, in North America, the game launched at $60, and even more so in Canada. But for some reason, Europe got the game for 40 euros, and in UK, there were even deals to get the game for like 25 pounds. Now, of course, if there was content worth $60, I wouldn't have been so upset about this, but the launch was pretty bare bones. There were only five multiplayer maps, and you could only play two of them at a time, which alternated every four hours. Not to mention it had only one game mode, Turf War. There was a single player campaign that lasted about 4-5 to five hours, a local multiplayer battle dojo, and a bunch of items available in the store which alternated every day, giving each player a different wardrobe to choose from. You got Squid Jump, which I got very acquainted with and I'll talk about why later, and if you don't count the amiibo challenges, which cost $13 each here with the figure, that's about it. As a consumer, going through almost everything in a day or two, I was a little skeptical. After doing that, I could only play the game in short bursts because I finished a match like, okay, I just played the same map like three times. There's no way I'll get it again. There's no way. <laughs> I kept switching weapons to put some variety in the gameplay, but it was starting to look like I was done with Splatoon after only a few days, and I didn't think new content would be enough for me to go back. But then, the announcement started, the first one being Ranked Battles. I heard something about it being unlocked when enough people reach level 10. Initially, I just thought this was going to be the same gameplay with another rank on it, so it didn't catch my interest. But turns out it was a new mode entirely. So I took the plunge again until I reached that rank. I kept watching that meter go up slowly, knowing I was doing this with the rest of the world. And all of a sudden, I started to feel the sense of community that Splatoon had created. The second I would boot up the game, I started seeing really creative posts, usually crossing squids over with other series. I mean, Squidward posts were getting a little old after a while. People started asking for new things to be added to the game, like pants or hairstyles and so forth. And most importantly, we reached the meter to unlock rank battles way faster than Nintendo even intended. And from there, my love for the game was reignited. In fact, players were unlocking stuff so fast that the devs were worried about our daily lives in an interview. Way to go, everyone. Anyway, with this new mode, players weren't just being stuck to two maps. We could just go to the other mode when we got bored, which had a different rotation. The new weapon at the time, the NZAP85, based on the NES Zapper, slowly became my new favorite with a decent rate of fire and was easy to aim with since my aiming fingers are... Butterfingers. In fact, coming back to this gameplay constantly convinced me to try new weapons I never would have thought of using. For instance, the Splatter Scope, which is pretty much a sniper rifle, was super satisfying to splat enemies with, and when you shoot, it creates this long straight line of ink to just swim across. I've never been a sniper in any shooter I've played, so this was kind of a huge step for me. And it was from this discovery that every time a new weapon was added, I'd run over to my Wii U and give it a shot. I wanted to see how they felt and if I found another weapon I could add to my arsenal, since different maps favor use of different weapon classes. Even if it was a custom version of an existing weapon, I'd still give it a shot to see if it was more favorable to what I was using. Nintendo's idea of free DLC over the summer worked. So all this begs the question, if Nintendo just released everything at once, would I have ended up liking the game as much as I do now? I mean if the game just gave us everything, there'd be almost double the amount of content that we'd have by the end of the summer. Well honestly, I don't think so. At least for me, since I have a short attention span when it comes to multiplayer games. If I just had a plethora of maps and weapons at my disposal, I can pretty much guarantee I wouldn't have tried like half of them. There's just this feeling gamers get when they're not allowed to access something. Like, hey, this is already done, why the heck aren't you giving this to me? Look at all the dollar bills I gave you! But when you finally get it, it could mean so much more to you, and you may be more inclined to try it. It's like when your mom or dad tells you, no dessert till you eat your dinner! For the sake of example, let's say you already really want a dessert, but now that you have to wait, you want it even more! If they just gave you the dessert alongside the dinner, at least to me it wouldn't mean as much. I'd eat it, be happy, and walk away and keep living my life. And that dessert being Splatoon, I personally would have just taken it in and just leave the game on the shelf collecting dust. Well, if I had a physical copy. I kinda buy games digitally a lot. 
This is not me! <laughs> I know I'm kind of reinforcing the same point here, but I don't know. Nintendo keeping content away from me really sparked my interest in the game. When I bought Splatoon, I saw it as a $40 game with a $20 season pass built in that I didn't know what to expect with. But now I see it for so much more than that. I paid $60 for a platform of a game. We're given a base amount of content to hold us over at launch, and then starts not just trickling, but dumping weapons and maps on us all the time. It's not like other shooters where you just get map packs every other month. Now that said, I don't think this idea was perfect by any means. With five maps at launch, giving us only two to use every four hours was so small to me. Maybe if it was three maps with one staying for every two rotations, or two maps every three hours, or maybe two two-map rotations I could choose from? Or I don't know, night and day cycles? Which Nintendo ended up saving for only Splatfests, which by the way are a real joy to be a part of. Team Dog Forever. I feel like with any of these implemented, I wouldn't have been so fatigued. The amiibo stuff was also quite a pain. Splatoon amiibo, at least where I am, are pretty hard to come by, and to get the squid amiibo, you need to get the three pack. I get they're trying to sell all three, but this became a huge pain and ended up just giving up and getting the inkling boy and girl only. But as I said, this was just a personal problem, and I really just wanted the sick wardrobe set that came with beating the squid amiibo's challenges. I mean, just look at it! Who doesn't want that? But what wasn't a personal problem was trying to play with friends. Oh jeez, I don't know what Nintendo was thinking here, but having to wait three months for matchmaking is just... What? This is an essential feature in most online games, and the fact it's not here at launch is unacceptable. If you're trying to play with more than, say, three of your friends, you can only join said friends in matches they're randomly thrown in, which means that a lot of the time, the match is just gonna get filled with a bunch of randos. Randos is a word, right? There is a queue you can wait in, and you'll get the next available spot, but if none of those random people leave, you're just gonna be stuck there unless you get all your friends to leave the match, join another one, and try this whole process again. Not to mention since there's no voice chat, not even just for friends, you'll probably all have to be in a call or a chat room to work together and fix it all. <sighs> Heck, I had the script up and ready to go, and then a new ranked mode release called Tower Control. It's fantastic! Dare I say it's my favorite mode in Splatoon so far. A team has to take over a tower and move it to the other side of the map tug of war style. But the problem with it is that ranked modes alternate every four hours. You can't choose to play either Splat Zones or Tower Control. You gotta wait! I don't think I even need to explain this one! Why can't I choose a game mode? This is stupid! Now all this may sound bad, but there were some upsides of the system. I had no connection problems at launch, which not many shooters can boast about. Having two maps at a time really made things snappy and I'd join and enter matches in under 30 seconds. And said limited maps made it a lot easier to choose the right weapon for the job since after a while, you know what to expect from each location. I'd even argue that playing Squid Jump on my gamepad, a lobby minigame, made waiting to join my friends somewhat fun. Now all these perks don't excuse some of the design choices, but at least what was up ran well. So yeah, Splatoon wasn't by any means a perfect launch. Heck, even the Splatfest where I am got delayed and put on Independence Day, like why out of all days would you do that? Come on. There were a lot of things Nintendo could fix for next time, but the main concept here, the content release system, was what took the game from being something I play for a week to something I play all the time. And I feel like I'm not alone here. The community for this game is so freaking strong a month in, and it was things like ranked battles that really got us all to work together towards a common goal. I felt like I was a part of something bigger, and that I will be a part of it for a really long time. Or until Splatoon 2 comes out, because, you know, that's definitely gonna happen now with the Squid fans. All the Squid fans. But hey, this is just all my opinion. What do you think about this whole summer of Splatoon and how Nintendo gave us content in this game? Whether you paid budget price or $60 or amounts you would not like to admit from Amiibo, like this guy. <sighs> Do you feel like you got your money's worth? Let me know in the comments what you think. Now if you'll excuse me, I have a dessert to go eat. And no, it's not Splatoon, but they do have frozen snacks, believe it or not. I can only imagine what Inkberry Froyo tastes like. <sighs> Who doesn't want that? It's like a Jaeger from Pacific Rim! Or like, any... 80s robot show, Mega's XLR, Evangelion, um, what are some other good ones? Robotech is pretty good, um, uh, Maycross, but that's also Robotech, that's such a long story. Desco's pretty good. I watched all the Gundams, Gundam's pretty nice, the Wing, uh, Endless Waltz was a lot better than Wing, Wing kinda sucks. Don't kill me, please. Nostalgia ain't gonna get you far. It's getting you nowhere! It sucks! It's the same thing! Like, every episode is the same thing. And, like, all the... 
all the protagonists are all pretty boys. I don't care about Hero. I don't care about... I forget the other characters' names. That's how forgettable they were. Fresh. Squid! <laughs> <laughs>